Hello and welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's edition of the program, we'll focus in on workplace safety and the need for workplace safety to be prioritized in every establishment. We will be right back. Once again, the leadership of the House of Representatives is interfacing with representatives of government and university teachers. For about five hours, all sides lay their cards bare. On the part of the government, Labor and Employment Minister Chris Ngige speaks on the efforts his ministry has made to end the strike to no avail. And through neg uh, negotiation, what we call collective bargaining agreement, you will arrive on what is good to be paid to you. Subject to the president's approval. He accuses the ASU president of inciting Nigerians against the ruling party and the labor leader fires back. This is how this is how the minister of labor is informed the public. Mr. Honorable Minister. This is how you misinform the public. We go and tell lies to the public. You will have an Government insists it does not have the financial capability to host two payment platforms as the legislators appeal to ASU to see reason. But ASU refuses to budge. It describes the suggestion by the legislators as alien to the law governing the university system. Are we really patriotic as a country? Are we people are we patriotic? You have two options. Option A is developed by your people free for you and your people. Option two, you are paying billions of naira every year for some to, to a foreign com for, for a foreign company. Let be right to say that the issues that have been identified that have defined solution will be the Utah's problem and the salary to pay. The speaker finally gives a summary of the position of the house. All litigation must come to an end. Let this be the time. I said this may be the last meeting, may be the last meeting, because all the issues, as far as we are concerned, we will make our recommendations, we will go and meet Mr. President and interface on your behalf. So I thank you once more for coming. And I hope this will, will pull will, uh, the final curtain on this very unfortunate, uh, unfortunate um, incident. The meeting is to reconvene in a week after the leadership of the House must have met with President Muhammadu Buhari on some of the union's demands. In 2021, a sum of 742.52 billion naira was allocated to the education sector, which is about 5.6% of the total budget for the year. Despite the amount, there are yet to be significant improvements in the country's education sector. Of the responsibility at the 58th National Conference of the Nigerian Union of Teachers, stakeholders say, aside from poor funding, insecurity remains another factor militating against the growth of the country's education system. Your Excellency, the Nigerian teachers are saying government should come to the aid of our local government cut across the country in assisting our local government in prompt payment and funding of primary school education in Nigeria. And therefore teachers must continue to occupy a very special place in the scheme of affairs of our country. And that is why I'm happy that some of the issues that have affected our teachers, particularly secondary and primary school, is receiving attention from the speech of the president of NUT that I've actually listened to. Some state governors were honored at the event for their impact in the education development of their states. The promise to continue to improve their investment in the sector, especially on the welfare of teachers. Dock workers in four African countries have resolved to form a common front in pursuing global standard in signing of collective bargaining agreement with multinational terminal operators, starting with APM terminals. We need the support of uh, ITF so that we can have what we call a uh, global content that involves all these multinational companies where the CBA is supposed to be a single CBA. I think that is the stand of uh, the 
we have a single CBA, I think uh, it, will, it will stop all this mess that these multinational companies are doing to African countries. During the meeting, ITF Docker Session Coordinator Enrico Totoranto stated that ITF is building a network of all maritime unions in Africa. National employers are trying to do is create a race to the bottom with terms and conditions, yeah? What we're trying to do is level upwards. And if we're talking to each other, exchanging CBAs, talking about a regional framework agreement for these GNTs. So one of the things that I would like us to discuss today, and I'm really keen to hear your views on it, is a framework agreement for the four countries who operate in APMT. Anytime THM is having a meeting globally, ITF goes there and participates. So when we have this kind of global framework, it's going to benefit us. There won't be any challenge with Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana. Anytime we have problem, anytime there's going to be a review of CBA, we all know. For multinational companies, there is pressure on them coming from changes to national laws, coming from pressure around investors about how they spend their money responsibly, that we have new leverage with multinational companies to make sure that the way that they operate their business is ethical, is environmental, and it does um, take account of labor rights. ITF fraternity has helped us. They've given us support going to court, fighting this fight. They've done privatization to the port, the container terminal too. We had banners, we had uh, wristbands, we had propaganda materials that we used to fight the, the privatization. The government team around the phone lawyer for us. They paid a lawyer and were able to win our fight. So what am I saying? As a trade union, you need to hold together. When you hold together, it will be fun. We'll always win. Don't let anybody to make you to go against your brother. And to all the females in the room, I don't want you taking treasure position. I want you to start fighting for secretary, president. You got to, we are not, we are not a fighting the men, but we are asking them to give us more space. The various unions also used the opportunity to show solidarity for the ongoing strike and embarked upon by the dock workers of the port of Felix Stowe, Liverpool, United Kingdom. Dock workers of Liverpool, you have the support of dock workers of Africa. Union! Power! Union! Power! Union! Power! This is Adekunle Shokumbi, a 22-year-old boy who was working with Spring Feeds as a stockist for production of animal feeds in Lagos. Adekunle was involved in an accident at the workplace which cost him his right arm. According to him, the unfortunate incident occurred on the 5th of April, 2022. Ever since I got there, the normal way they have been doing it is whenever there's remnant inside the machine, the normal way they do it is just for them to use their hands to bring it out. So, and I've adapted to it. So, when I switch it up, then I go to the machine. I was trying to use my hand to bring everything out. Fortunately, then I had the, I had the machine turned on. I was like, because I couldn't, be at, the first, at the first instance, I can see through my forearm, I felt it then. So I was even shouting that, David, because that was the guy that owned the machine. So I was just shouting at the top of my voice, like, David, up the machine, because I was seeing a pigeon. I said, up the machine, up the machine. So it was just owning and offing, owning and offing, until the team suck the other of my hand in. In an interview with TVC News, Adekunle's mother said her son contemplated suicide when he was receiving treatment at the hospital. Although he is now stabilized, she wants her son to be properly compensated because she is not sure of what more he can do with just one arm. April 5. So, I machine Reacting to the incident, the chairperson of Lagos State's chapter of Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, issued a 14-day ultimatum to factories in the state to be safety compliant. We are issuing a 14-day ultimatum, two weeks, 14-day ultimatum, in which we will mobilize our affiliates, the workers, to you know, come out en masse against all these companies and to ensure that we have a decent working environment for workers and for Nigerians. 
I took time to visit Spring Feeds factory at Itamaga area of Ikorudu in Lagos to know more about the safety culture in the company and why Adekunle Shokumbi has not been compensated. Occupation health and safety, according to the International Labour Organization, is the responsibility of every company that actually have workers in its place. Um, with the look of things here, um, the company um, seed feeds is yet to give response on um, their own intervention. The issue of accidents at the workplace is a serious issue. And the ratio which I cannot lay my hand out now, but it's so alarming. Whether physical, mental, or ailment, uh, there are a lot of things that has to do with workplace uh, issue. As far as accident uh, or ailment arising from because of the environment of the work, a serious issue. The current what we have, which is NSITF, was actually meant to address the problem arising from uh, issues that require uh, compensations. But the recent story we are hearing, the funds that are contributed by employer for the purpose of compensation are being diverted. Without uh, having minimum or at least Minimum standard of safety. It should not be it's something that can never be compromised. So that we can be, we can prevent avoidable deaths, loss of you know arms, fingers, and even sight. Terrible accidents are happening almost on a daily basis. But most of this can be traced to uh, companies that are very complacent, that are not taking safety as and are not attracting safety with adequate importance he ought to be given. So we can reduce it to a bare minimum. If only company can reawaken their sense of reason and placing higher value of safety in any workplace. On the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the General Secretary of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Emmanuel Uwaja. He brings us up to speed on the need for relevant stakeholders to do the needful in terms of monitoring, in terms of implementation of the needed facilities to ensure that workplaces are safe according to the International Labour Organization standard. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you so much. <laughs> a lot has been happening in the world of work and um, it seems not to be so palatable because of so many challenges that the country is faced with. But first I want to concentrate on the issue of um, industrialization and um, safety in the workplace. Right now as we're speaking, um, there are a lot of accidents that have been happening in the workplace and nobody seems to want to take responsibility. How would you react to this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty sad one, actually, because uh, each time we talk about industrialization and uh, we don't uh, focus on uh, safety, particularly in our country, then uh, we miss the point. Because rather than uh, become again, uh, we then turn it to a, a terrible uh, um, phenomenon for our people. Uh, because uh, we have the challenge of genuine monitoring of the workplace, genuine inspection. Uh, uh, the other day we were having a conversation around uh, amending or reviewing regulations that have to do with the Factories Act uh, to bring it up to speed to global acceptable standards. And uh, fortunately, even at the global level, the ILO has uh, brought up the issue of health and safety uh, is being prioritized and made a, a key issue uh, in the world of work. It's now a fundamental right. It's now a, a, a human right uh, the issue. So, uh, but increasingly uh, because of the desire to quickly make money, the desire to cut corners, we're having uh, so much accidents in the, in the factories, particularly with uh, new work environments. Uh, the established work environments uh, obviously have uh, 
standard codes that they kind of are adhering to, but the new uh, factories that are upcoming, that are being installed, who resort to cheap labor in court to cut corners, don't put their workforce through proper training, particularly with regards to health and safety. So we're increasingly we're having a huge number of industrial accidents, uh, particularly of young people, uh, because that's what makes it more depressing. Uh, young people are losing their limbs, losing their lives, and uh, it's quite a frightening uh, scenario. Um, what do you think should be done to ensure that um, most um, industrial organizations are safety compliant? We need to increase uh, uh, enforcement of regulations, particularly where factories are cited, uh, who gives the approvals for their buildings, for the arrangements of machinery in the workplace. The, 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 what we are seeing increasingly is uh, Factories are being cited even in residential areas. Factories are being cited outside the uh, prying eyes of the public, so to say. So you then have uh, the inspectors probably not even being aware of where these places are. And uh, most of these factory sites, the employers there resist unionization. 80%, if not 95% of the challenges we are having are coming from unorganized factories, factories that the owners have resisted unionization where uh, there is no union and we only get to know that such places exist uh, from uh, complaints arising from such incidents uh, because when the young people then go home, they say, ah, go to NLC, go to labor. And that is when we then get to know that uh, you then start meandering through uh, residential areas, you start meandering through off-road uh, locations uh, in some neighborhoods and then you realize that uh, some kind of productive venture has been going on with machines that ordinarily should be properly uh, monitored, properly supervised and worked with, but it's not going. So definitely the regulatory capability in terms of manpower distribution in terms of uh, regular uh, visitations and uh, maybe more campaigns, enlightenment campaigns to put the citizens to get involved. You know, we might need to have some citizens involvement in letting them know that some production activities should be going on in some neighborhoods. Residential neighborhoods shouldn't have factories and where such exists, they should be able to uh, not necessarily whistle blow, but at least put it out there for people to know that there is a factory here. Uh, get, uh, get the ministry to establish hotlines that people can reach to say there's a factory in so -so, so street, there's a factory in so, -so village, so that they, there can be some uh, uh, link between the citizens and the ministry. Okay, you spoke about um, unionization of workers and that most of these affected um, or impacted companies um, do not allow unionization of workers. As the General Secretary of the Nigerian Labour Congress, um, what more do you think the um, Congress can do to address um, this uh, issue of maybe companies not wanting to unionize workers, of ensuring that we have mass yeah, uh, uh, ordinarily, uh, very clearly, it's, uh, it's a democratic right and uh, for any country that genuinely loves its citizens, uh, that should be a cause that shouldn't be left just to the trade unions. Uh, ironically, the US president, uh, President Biden, will tell you publicly that he's not ashamed to be called a workers' president. Uh, he takes unionization of work very seriously. It's a policy. In fairness, under his uh, watch, there is uh, a committee on organizing, on unionization within the White House that uh, monitors, advises, and guides him. And for every opportunity he has, he tells corporate America, you cannot uh, uh, tamper with the workers' uh, ability to organize, uh, the workers' ability to belong to a trade union. That should be the, the 
uh, catchphrase, even in Nigeria, if our people uh, have their own people at heart. You can't say you love your citizens, you want to serve your citizens, and you watch them under your own eyes, not that they are traveling to Europe or America in their own country being enslaved in terms of lack of appreciation of uh, uh, standards, uh, which ordinarily uh, you have uh, subscribed to. The Nigerian government is part of the ILO family, and the ILO family is the global standard on uh, managing the world, uh, which is a tripartite nature, the government, the employer, and the worker. Uh, so you should consciously, consciously create an enabling environment, consciously uh, put up policies and uh, activities that encourage your citizens to exercise their right to unionize, to organize. So it should be an aberration. Uh, Management that put up stiff resistance uh, very forcefully should be discouraged. They should know that uh, it would be wrong. Uh, it, there can be room for them to do business genuinely if they refuse to recognize the right of the worker to organize because uh, it's a fundamental right. It's a, a right the Nigerian government has uh, 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 given into by ratifying uh, the conventions, uh, the ILO conventions in that regard. So clearly for us is the need to really begin to see the Nigerian citizen as human that uh, should enjoy some rights rather than see it as their business. You can't say it's the business of your citizens because uh, their health and safety should be paramount to you and their health and safety starts with uh, you showing interest and then them also uh, collaborating with you and not uh, throwing them to the dogs to an exploitative employer. Any employer that understands the world of work genuinely cannot say no to unionization. But to anyone that is crude, that wants to belong to the Stone Age, then shouldn't have any room operating in a modern uh, environment. So clearly, uh, that's the standard we should be wishing for because that is the right thing to do. When it comes to inflation that we're experiencing in the country, talking about um, fat that is not stable, how do you think um, decent work can be prioritized in this um, kind of situation? Because the employers also have to make profit. Yeah, uh, clearly for us is uh, for all hands to be on deck. There can be an employer without an employee, and there cannot be a company without a worker. Uh, so when people make the heavy wind of uh, uh, workers, it, it becomes a challenge of uh, chicken and egg, which comes first. Uh, you're not going to call yourself a top flight blue chip company if there are no people working there. People have to work for your company to answer blue chip. You won't answer blue chip from the thin air. And uh, if the conditions of those working for you don't make sense, then uh, it's an accident waiting to happen. Uh, so clearly, the decent work agenda is an agenda that is for the sustainable existence of the world. Uh, it's for us uh, to have certainty of job, job security, the social protection uh, being available, the work environment being safe, uh, uh, provisions uh, to make sure nobody is left behind. So any environment you think that can be work without it being decent means you are deluding yourself. And that is what then leads to continuous decline. You are not going to have a productive sector <clears throat> like what is happening in the education sector with unhappy staff. Uh, it will then be uh, your productivity and the products that will come out of that will not meet uh, standards and it then becomes a vicious circle. So from the takeoff point, from the takeoff point, there's no cutting corners. It has to be a decent job every step of the way. It cannot be for one part and then the other part will be out of it. No, because uh, uh, like the saying goes, one bad apple spoils uh, the lot. So every apple in this instance has to be top flight. Uh, so clearly for us, is for government to appreciate the need for decent work uh, environment. 
in terms of uh, the pillars that constitute it. Because in the long run, it pays off everybody. If, if uh, the worker is properly remunerated, he would, he would then be able to have the same purchasing power to purchase the goods that have been produced and uh, pay for the services being rendered. If you don't have that, then you are trying to milk just a few. Uh, so if you produce uh, a million cars and only 10 people have the capacity to buy it, yeah, that, that car industry is going to fold up. So you cannot uh, put much emphasis on one side and leave the other. You must strike that balance. So clearly for us, it's something that our hands must be on deck. Nobody is more important than the other. Once we begin to appreciate that, that uh, it's a tripod and that we need each other to sustain the existence of the world, then it definitely will appreciate the concept of uh, decent work agenda. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for the fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth. Thank <laughs> you.